Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor and privilege for me to uh, be able to say a few words uh, at this opening. Um, it's also uh, emotional, uh, I should say, and uh, especially moved to see uh, Potentic's daughter sitting in front of uh, Johanna, that I haven't seen for so many years. Anyway, uh, of course, uh, the name of Alexander Botendi given to this lab is uh, for one obvious reason. But I think the, well, the, the fame that the IHE has acquired from the very beginning, uh, international fame, is largely due to Botendi's seminar here. And uh, in fact, um, next to the Simon's uh, auditorium, you have this room at the entrance which was uh, formerly uh, uh, a music room, a music pavilion, and then a library, and it is the room in which uh, uh, Grotendieck uh, held uh, his seminars. Uh, they were long seminars, uh, lasting one year, sometimes two. Uh, seminars were in the tradition of uh, Hadama and Carton. And uh, then, and combine somehow the advantage of um, making it possible to develop um, full-fledged theory at length and starting from scratch, and of course the usual uh, social role of making people meet and interact, but in this case, of course, with maybe stronger uh, common interest and motivation. Of course, these long seminars are gone, but uh, somehow <coughs> their spirit survives in some uh, uh, intense, intensive uh, work groups on uh, devoted to a special topic. Well, I remember I started attending um, the seminars, botanic seminars, in the fall of 1964, uh, which is rather bad because I had already missed as year one, two, three, and four, so almost uh, <laughs> more than uh, more than uh, half of the seminars. And in fact, I nearly missed SGA-5. <laughs> Certainly, I would have missed SGA-5. And that didn't mean for Goldenick's insistence on my attending, and even what, is, what was worse, writing up notes for his talks. In fact, the problem is that at the time, my background in, in algebraic geometry was uh, near zero. I said, well, of course, it's so high power, and uh, I will never follow. But to my surprise, uh, I could. So it was because of Grothendieck's style. Certainly those who had the privilege of listening to him remember. So at the blackboard, he was of course extremely energetic and dynamic, but above all, he was methodically clear and rigorous. Uh, remember he neatly reviewed the material he needed for his talks, he set the goal clearly, he set the plan, and then he started with precise definitions and statements and full proofs, and sometimes some digressions. When I say full proofs, I realize that it might happen that at times he would say, well, this is a routine verification and the reader will uh, make it so. For example, all diagrams should commute, so the reader should uh, <laughs> check that. Sometimes it was not so obvious, and sometimes maybe the diagram could be uh, anti -commute. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in fact, it was easy to take uh, uh, down notes, and um, uh, I had no problem in, uh, in fact, in, uh, in following at least uh, formally. But this substance was rich, you see. At, at, at the beginning, so fall of 1964, he started by discussing local duality for torsion she is prime to the characteristic, and it's at this time that he formulated this famous conjecture of absolute purity, and also his conjecture on the um, <coughs> existence of dualizing complexes, which uh, in fact, in the, the most general form, uh, demanded by Grothendieck, was proved only much later by Gaber, uh, 1994 for absolute purity, and then 2005 for realizing complexes. And uh, after that, we had the uh, um, cycle class, homology, lefchet verdier trace formula, Grothendieck's own trace formula, uh, using Nielsen-Weck and method, 
and we had the root and the Kochavar is formula, and then the elastic sheaves, and then the uh, rationality of, of the, the L function. So it was a huge uh, uh, seminar. And from the very beginning, Rotendik, of course, was using the language of Dirac categories and functors, and I was discovering that with delight. And in fact, uh, just uh, playing with it, uh, with pleasure, uh, it was really a fantastic uh, new breeze which was blowing, and uh, I had so much pleasure that, in fact, I became what uh, Grotendieck described uh, in uh, uh, Ripping and Sewing. I was a community student. And uh, in any case, um, <coughs> look, uh, 50 years have elapsed. And this formalism, we use it uh, every day. It doesn't have a, a wrinkle some, somehow, of course. Uh, some conjectures have been proven, uh, uh, have been progressed in many places, but still the formalism doesn't look old. Uh, even maybe five years before Grotendieck was the material uh, the homological algebra, or ten years before Grotendieck, material homological algebra, I prefer not to look at it. And um, <clears throat> in the audience at the time, I remember, well, of course there was the mesure, the student, the Mazur, Giraud, uh, Verdier, the Reynolds, uh, Joanolou, and also I remember, of course, uh, older ones, which are, of course, much younger than uh, I am now. There was Dieudonné, there was uh, Samuel, Serre would come from, from time to time, uh, and Tate, of course, who visited uh, from 65 to 66. And, of course, uh, many others I, I can't um, mention. Um, as for De Ling, uh, he arrived in January uh, 65. Uh, in fact, it's Tietz who introduced him to Grotendieck uh, at the Gourbaki Seminar of December uh, 64. And as far as I remember, um, during the seminar, he had sort, some kind of a sort, sort of a low profile. He didn't say much. Uh, but soon I heard of him as a, the, the person who could solve uh, any puzzle, any seemingly intractable puzzle, they said, find a non-empty topaz with, uh, without points, for example. <laughs> Impossible, yeah, so points are two, uh, two, uh, the two ways of defining a Bayesian map are the same. So intractable, so Artin, uh, uh, the Grotendieck had tried for four hours and then and went nowhere. So, in the, just uh, in, the, in a minute or so, the link could solve that. Anyway, um, uh, these were um, the, the participants of the, of the seminar, but the talks were uh, mostly given by, by Grotendieck, uh, in SGA5 at least. And uh, in the second part, but uh, at least in the first part, in the second part we had talks by students, we had talks by, by Joanolu on LED cohomology, and uh, uh, we had talks by Bucco on the Grotendieck mm, uh, formula, and also we had a talk by Serre on the um, Swan conductor. But uh, mostly Grotendieck uh, uh, left his students with the writing of, of notes of his exposé, so they had to learn the trade, and it was a hard uh, lesson somehow. In several pieces, I, I recall the, these long afternoons I, I spent with him at uh, his place. Uh, going over all the remarks he had made, the remarks and suggestions and criticism he had made on my writings. And uh, maybe you and I even remember that uh, we had dinner uh, after a very long discussion, and that was not finished because after dinner we had more discussion, and eventually Potendi would uh, accompany me to the train, and then I, I, I would take the, the last train to, uh, to Paris just before midnight. So these were the extraordinary experiences. And the talks, uh, the seminar, they started, at, I think, at 2.30, according to Renault. I wasn't sure of 2.15 or 2.30, but I think 2.30. They lasted one hour and a half, and we had tea afterwards, and more discussions, of course. But one thing I remember is that before that, uh, often we had lunch at the cafeteria, the same cafeteria that you, you all know. But uh, you see, there was Grotendieck, there was Serre, there was State, and... Uh, um, uh, maybe uh, Tietz or other people, and I, what I remember is that I understood nothing. 
Because the conversation was not about the present seminar, but topics for future seminars, like uh, semi-stable reduction, the dead curve, the dead geometry, I But it was beautiful anyway. Then, uh, next year, we had um, um, SGA6. So SGA6 was uh, riemann rohr and the intersection theory. And I think it was a vacation for Groth and Dick. Uh, somehow it was old stuff, so he quietly let uh, Bertelot and myself uh, run the seminar from Lot he had given us. And as good students, of course, we wanted to do much more general than what he had uh, proposed. So in some cases we succeeded, and uh, Grotendieck was happy. He even said once that uh, Bertelot was more functorized uh, than, than he, he was. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, this was SGA 6, and I said that uh, Rodelic maybe was not so much interested in uh, riemann any, uh, any longer, but he was still interested in the development of intersection theory. Intersection theory and singular schemes, but not moving the cycles, but using K-theoretic uh, method instead. I think a very good approach which was somehow in the 70s eclipsed by Fulton's work, but is still, I think, more, more powerful. And then uh, in 67, so that was the end of uh, SGA6, and Grothendieck thought they did marvelous things at this time. So first he invented the crystalline cohomology. And uh, he discussed, um, so then invented the crystalline cohomology, he gave some talks there, and he let uh, Bertelot write in his CV the full fledged theory for that. And also Grothendieck was really interested in the connection of that with. Uh, uh, the work of Serre and Tate on feasible groups and also all the links with uh, uh, Dudonet theory. But uh, also at the same time, he formulated these famous uh, standard conjectures, so not standard at all, I think, and uh, uh, which are still uh, widely open today, except for the first one, the, uh, the hard left theorem, which was proved by Deleen uh, much later. And um, uh, then, uh, of course, the uh, uh, subsequent theory of motives. So it was uh, quite an occupation. And uh, how about the next seminar, SGA 8? <laughs> but yes, Rotendieck had told me that uh, he wanted an SGA 8. And he wanted to, uh, to have it um, on abelian schemes. And as certainly, so it would have been a fantastic seminar, maybe, and uh, the spirit of G SGA 3. And we certainly miss it. Of course, we had Mumford's book, but maybe it's not so functorized as uh, the people would have liked. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Grotendieck, uh, after 67, 68, was still working on um, crystals and Dieudonné theory. And of course, he talked at uh, ICM in 1970. And um, Certainly, he proposed the problem of mysterious functor, which is something interesting that occupied the Fontaine for, for some years, and maybe other people in periodic uh, hard theory. But still, I had the impression that uh, mathematics had ceased to be the main focus of his interest, and that he was uh, slowly drifting away from uh, mathematics. Somehow, the, I think the uh, the fairies of politics uh, had snatched him and uh, maybe uh, lured him into uh, radical ecology. Uh, anyway, uh, in retrospect, looking back uh, at these years, the 60s, those seminars, and so obviously a golden age of uh, algebraic geometry. Uh, the, the, the wind was blowing. We were discovering uh, beautiful new territories and exploring them. Uh, uh, boldly, happily, really a golden age. But today, uh, in this uh, auditorium, in the Simon's Auditorium, there is one person who has never met Rotendieck. For one good reason, that person was born the same year as Etal Chromology. <laughs> but this person is probably the one on earth who knows uh, EGA and SGA best. One uh, who is really the few who had uh, fully uh, assimilated Rotendieck's uh, philosophy. So this person is the director of the research at the CNRS and has visited uh, the IHES 
for over 30 years. So this is uh, Ophir Gaber, and I am pleased to introduce him for the first talk. Uh, his title is uh, Spreading Out of Rigid Analytic Families and Observations on Periodic Whole Theory. Now, Ophir Gaber. 